Something you said on your Secret Writer podcast uh, when your co-host Nick Job was interviewing you、mm. is everyone teaches you how to do something, how to act, etc.,、mm -hmm. but no one teaches you how to live as the person who does that.、Mm -hmm. So, wonder、yeah. if you can expand on that. Yeah,、uh, this is one of the big, you know, underlying ideas in in I think my life, and certainly why I. Coach and help people, and you know, make YouTube videos and all that stuff.、Um, is that I, you know, I spent a long time and am continuing to create stuff and learn how to create stuff. You know, and I, you know, studied theater in undergrad, and I, you know, went to acting school, and I went to playwriting school, and I, you know, also studied to be a coach. And I feel like it's people can say like, do this, like. Create a log line. Here's how to do a character. Here's how many scenes you know a play has, or you know could have, or or a TV script or a movie.、Uh, those things are not easy, but fundamental. And on some level, even though lots of people have different theories, are universal. We can sort of agree at you know the length of a hour drama, the length of a a film or a play, and we can say you know it sort of looks like this. But to live the life of a person who's doing that, who's creating those things, or auditioning, or trying to be a musician, or trying to be a singer, all of that stuff, like that day to day, how do you get up in the morning and inspire yourself to go back to rehearsal, to go back to the page, to work on another draft, to take another meeting, to you know, it's it's exhausting, and nobody talks about that. You know, how do we sort of Gather the energy of mentorship and friendship and spirituality and self care and good eating and exercise. Like, how do we keep it going? And so that's partly why I think we've all seen, both personally and you know, nationally and internationally, we see artists burn out. We see artists burn out all the time, you know, or、uh, or fall apart in different ways. And I think it's. There's so much to learn and so much to lean into each other about how do we do these things, how do we keep it going,、um, and to be willing to ask each other, you know, to be willing to ask our other writer friends or actor friends, or you know, or to hire a coach, or to you know, be in therapy, or to you know, go to your yoga class and do your meditation. Like, how do you lean into those things that are going to sustain you through the The crazy ups and downs of an absolutely crazy and probably always will be on some level crazy industry, like that's that's a conversation that I'm always in and that I'm really interested in helping foster and pass on because I don't see people talking about that. Right, and if you look at something, let's say I know this has been a couple years with Baz Luhrmann's Elvis,、mm. you know, and and how this this person that was just worshipped. Really became a, a victim of his own success through、yes. maybe a bad manager,、right. things like that, and and everybody wanting a piece of him. And we see that all、yeah. the time. So many stories, so many personalities, so many. You know, you don't have to look far in the entertainment industry news to find new stories of of those people、right. who run into problems or you know start behaving badly or whatever it is. You know, it's like how do we. How do we do this in a way that's nurturing, where we can be human beings and take care of ourselves, and you know, and still do our art? It's like, how do we do that? And that your relationships will change too. The people around you, their reaction to you, different、mm -hmm. things. Yes. And so you, you know, you always think about, hey, we're all hungry. We're all gonna come up together and stuff. And then friendships fall apart, or、right. people don't want to speak to you anymore, and you don't know what happened. And, yes. Yeah. So、yeah. that's something that's not really—it's kind of taboo to talk about. Yeah, right. And so, how great would it be if we can get together as we, you know, rise in whatever part of the industry we're in, and keep the conversation going? Say like, oh yeah, I just, I just won the Oscar, but today I'm feeling really depressed and I'm headed to therapy, or you know, my show is up for an Emmy, but you know, I, you know, I really,、uh, you know. Whatever I really need to get more exercise, and I've just been in the house, and I feel like I shouldn't go outside because everybody's, you know, just to be in the conversation about those things that people aren't talking about, you know, that is,、uh, you know, this for me, this is one of those invisible things that I'm obsessed with as a writer. You know, it's like how do we get to that underneath 
part that uh, that we need to explore as creative people so that we stay healthy creative people. Another blog post you talk about hope mm -hmm. and you said uh, sometimes we feel less alone when talking about what's not working in our creative career um, and how commiserating with others in the industry can seem enticing but then sometimes complaining about our career actually hurts us. Mm. And it's easy to do and sometimes, you know, we, you know, as a woman, you know, a lot of times we bond over gossip and yes. complaints and it's, I'm not saying men don't do it too, but that's how we kind of form friendships, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's easy to complain. It's really easy. <laughs> you know, and there are, I think one of the reasons why it's easy is that the industry and, and, and I think society in general, we sort of make it seem like it, it's black and white. You know, like everything's amazing or everything's not amazing, right? And so how do we how do we ground the conversation about what we're up to in a way that is normalizing? You know, that doesn't have to be super ups and super downs. That doesn't have to be like, you know, takedowns of each other or, um, you know, we one of the things that we do, I think, with as we watch stuff and talk about it, you can see this language all through, all across social media and you know in interactions. When people sometimes, when people don't like a movie or a TV show, their language is so extreme. Like I hate that show. That those writers should be shot. Like what a ter you know. It's like why are we doing that? You know. And then and then the flip side. Like oh, it's that's the perfect show. It's the you know, what about sort of the in-between way? What about being able to say like, that show is for me, I really like it because I relate to this. That show, it's not for me. You know, I know people like it, you know. How, how do we find some sort of middle balance that then maybe speaks to how we can talk about our creative lives? Like, you know, it's a good day writing. I feel pretty good about it. Or eh, not such a great day, but you know, I have hope that tomorrow will be better or uh, I think there's something in this piece that I'm working on and you know, why does it have to be the extremes? Why do we have to lean into hyperbole that I think then allows us to sort of pendulum swing into this, you know, complaints or praise, like where's the middle ground and how can we be kind not only to each other but to ourselves? Right, and it's become a part of the culture, you know, just uh, hate, you know, bonding over hating something or a certain celebrity or whatever, mm -hmm. and it, it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. That it's become this, this new, th I, maybe it's always happened, but now with social media, it's just so much more easy to have yeah. a voice, so, you know. Sometimes you said to your clients, what else am I doing with my life outside of writing? Yeah. What's that about? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, you know, writing, all of the arts, it's all an expression. I think it's all meant to be an expression of what it is we're doing on the planet. So if, if, you're, if one is not doing anything else on the planet except writing, except striving to be that person, then what do we end up bringing to our art? Like, you know, can I, do I have something, I have something to bring to my work if I've lived a life that then informs the next thing I'm going to bring to my work? You know, if I, whatever, I mean, I, I don't need to necessarily sort of say that like volunteering, you know, at a soup kitchen or a homeless shelter is better than other things, you know, it's like, but are you out there, are you gardening? Are you, you know, are you having good conversations? Are you, you know, are you talking to your neighbors? Are you surfing? Are you sculpting? Are you cooking? Like any number of things that you get to do is going to inform the art that you get to do. And if you're not doing those other things, I'm not sure, you know, eventually, I'm not sure what you're going to be bringing to your art if you don't have a life to, uh, to reference, you know, to talk about, to bring to the fore. You know, so much of our, our identity here in LA is based on what we're either doing or what we're striving to do. Yep. Most people come here from somewhere else or even if they grew up here. And so that's, it's so hard because that's all we're thinking about or we're looking through the trades, what someone else in our industry is doing, that we want to be them. Yeah. It's hard. I mean, yeah, it's hard. And I have my own version of that, you know, you know wanting to sort of see what other people are doing and to, uh, to recognize or to be um, hypervigilant about what I'm not doing. 
but I think that's the, you know, that's why I meditate. Like, that's why I go to therapy. That's why I, you know, that's why I hang out with my husband and, you know, do social things and connect with people and go to see my parents and, you know, take trips and do volunteer work or take a walk around the block. Like all of those things will inform and help and enhance everything, you know? So yeah, it's super hard to be in the bubble and to feel like it's all about the success. But, you know, part of the success, part of a successful life is the life part of the successful life. 